probably not the way you want to live your life, but that's the way I'm living mine. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. I always appreciate you coming around. Before we get into anything, I have to say a big thank you. We recently uh, passed the 1,000 subscriber mark, and for a YouTube creator, that's a big deal because it opens up doors for us here to like uh, monetize and, and make this more of like a kind of like a journey that like will actually matter and impact our lives and and all these other things. So I never expected it. I kind of started this a little while ago just because it's fun and I wanted to share, but um, it's been great, and I'm going to keep going. And you guys have really just motivated me for that. So thank you so much for coming around. I never expected it. I am just totally pumped on it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. A million times from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you guys more than more than I can say. But uh, today what we're gonna do is, I've got a lot of sheet metal work coming up on the F100, so I'm gonna tune up the English wheel. I'm gonna make a little mount for the back of it to hang my, um, my shrinker stretcher off of and make some foot operated pedals for it. And then maybe a few small things on the Mustang. I'm waiting for some fuel parts. And then it's just wiring on that and we'll torch it off, bump the key over, hopefully make some good noises out of it. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into it. Thanks so much for coming around, guys. Really uh, still super pumped on, on, uh, on the 1,000 mark. I just, I can't say thank you enough. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's, uh, let's do some stuff. All right, guys. So here is uh, what we're working with. We have these Lancaster style shrinker stretchers. Now these are fresh off the boat, um, China knockoffs. And they work decent. The jaws need a little bit of tuning up uh, from my understanding, but I've had them in the vise and they shrink and stretch metal. So here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Kind of going to hang them on a piece of square tube like this. But let me, uh, let's go over to the, to the bead roller, or to the bead roller, to the English wheel and take a look. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to have them kind of off the side, like so the shrinker here and the stretcher just on the other side. And then I need to have them stand off and staggered so the control rod from the bottom or from the back like uh, doesn't interfere with each other. So what I'm thinking about doing is running a piece of square tube at like a, like a really sharp angle, like I don't know, 70 or something off here and then make a little platform there. This thing is plenty sturdy that it could handle like my foot pressure pushing down on this thing. So I think that's what I'm gonna do first is I've got a piece of tubing I'm going to lay it out. I, it's, the angle I need is way too steep to do it uh, with the bandsaw, so we're going to cut it by hand. kind of bring it up off of here like so and then cut the top of that thing flat and make it like a, uh, a table sort of it may need some supports between like here and there I don't know but uh, let's get this thing uh, mocked up here all right so, guys there's the back of the English wheel we got the spot uh, ground down where we're gonna weld it and we have our main post structure here. There's the angle there. And now what I needed to do for the top is I needed to get uh, where it would be 90 degrees. So where this line here, where the 
the tool post would sit would be 90 degrees and to do that basically all I did was I knew that this angle was was 30 degrees so then I just took the uh, angle finder and uh, it's real nice because if you read it there it's it has the complementary degrees so 30 and 150 make 180 but we know we only needed 90 so what, what did we end up 60 yeah we, we did 60 from that so and uh, let's see so we put it over here and that's what it became so just dialed it in at 60 and now uh, and I marked my lines so when I weld this up and I cut that well other way around I'm gonna cut this first and then weld it to the back part of the English wheel and this theoretically should be um, flat because this angle plus that angle or minus that angle is going to be 90 degrees so the tool will be flat let's take it over to the bandsaw cut it off all right so this is where my head's at with this so i made this so it's kind of like a elbow height really so like when you're standing there you can like feed the material into it and it's just kind of like right at working height so this is kind of what I'm thinking, but I, I'm not sure about this. What I think is probably better, or well, I can do it maybe if I kicked it off at an angle, but what I want to do is stagger them somehow so uh, the, the control rods don't go down through here and also don't interfere with each other. I think if I maybe, if I kicked it off at an angle like that and then kicked, I could kick them both off at an angle. like that no I don't like that they're not fully supported you're just you're spitballing with me so that's, that's how I that's how I figure it out I think what I'm gonna end up doing is either welding two of these side by side or a plate if I have a piece of quarter inch or three eighths somewhere and then I'll just cut out basically a, a plate that will have one of them on this side and then one of them staggered and over on that side. So that's gonna be the next thing and then we'll figure out some gussets and some linkage and pedals for it. All right guys, I decided to go with the plate. I just liked it better and uh, forgive me, but there's a lot of like fab work and like CNC stuff that I didn't film. But um, yeah, sometimes I just get into the groove of making things and it just all goes by. Anyways, I had this piece of 3 8 plate. I cut it out on the plasma table and uh, it, everything's just tacked right now in case I don't like this design, but I think it's gonna work. And I shortened the arms here, welded some 3 8 tab on there, and then basically what the plan is down here is that I'm gonna run, um, these are gonna be like foot pedals, and then I'll run a rod with a clevis up to the top here, and I'll probably just use this rebar, and then down to the, uh, the foot pedal right there, and I'll figure out my angles as I go and kinda, tack everything into place so it gives me like the full range and then down here this is just more of uh, that square tubing the same tubing I, I built the the main pedestal out of I've got a couple feet left and if I have to I'll run some supports from here to the floor and then uh, I'm just going to cap this stuff off I've got some um, I was actually thinking about two things that maybe 3d print a little plug for that or just weld a piece of plate over the front which I'll probably do and not complicate my life just make it easier like that but yeah overall that's the design we're looking at right now I think it's a pretty tidy package it's gonna work well and also what I want to do is on the front of the English wheel here I'm gonna put some casters here so and they're gonna be just above the ground level so basically what I can do is tilt this whole setup back and then roll it around on its back wheels I think it'll be doable with that much weight on the back I could be wrong um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see all right guys it is the next day we're back out here in the shop and I've got a little bit further let me show you where we're at okay so I'm just drilling the holes to mount one of the or the I guess it's the shrinker up here and I went to Lowe's and I got this door spring and it's gonna return the pedal so I got the pedals all mocked up and tabbed out and everything I got to cut one more tab and then drill a hole in the shrinker and in the tab where I'm gonna mount the uh, the rod which is just a piece of rebar and I think that should be fine I mean rebar is plenty tough I'm not gonna be putting too much pressure on this so let's um, 
let's finish drilling this hole. We'll mount it up and then we'll start figuring our placement for the, uh, the I guess it's a control rod. shrinker stretcher stand here I've got both sides mocked up now and this one I'm not sure if I showed you but this side is finished um, it works fine I sh I've uh, shrunk some metal with it I have the stretcher mounted up on this side and the pedal figured out just left is the linkage for this side and again guys this is nothing fancy this is <laughs> rebar some uh, what looks like I guess one by one or uh, square tubing and just I, I built this out of everything I had left over other than these springs I had to go buy those springs, but everything else was just um, scrap bin parts complete on the shrinker stretcher stand this thing came out pretty good i'm happy now it's built from scrap <laughs> everything here was left over and i found it in my scrap bin and that's kind of the reason i save stuff my wife calls me a hoarder but i'm not i save for moments just like this uh, so there is a few things i had to buy um, one of them actually i think the only thing i had to buy was springs i bought these these are like springs that close your screen door and they were like $3 a piece. That's the only thing I bought. Well, and of course the shrinker stretcher, I bought those. But um, everything else is just scraps from other projects that I had laying around. And let me put you guys on the sand and show you this thing in action. All right, now this is just a piece of scrap 18 gauge. I cut a strip out of it. So uh, I'm not making anything here. I just wanna show you how convenient this is to have your hands free. like that okay guys I won't bore you with uh, too much more of that but um, you get the premise you get the idea the cool part about it is that I built it for nothing it, there's six dollars in springs there have yourself a little scrap pile let me show you mine it's disgusting there it is right now it's torn apart it's because I dug through it I just throw everything in that corner probably not the way you want to live your life but that's the way I'm living mine so anyways guys thanks so much for coming around I really appreciate our time together and uh, that thing came together for motivation from this channel and getting things done because I have a terrible habit of starting things and not finishing it or finding other things that um, take precedence when I, once I get started on a project. But this is done. I'm going to roll some paint on it. I bought some yellow paint and I'm going to roll that on there and that's done. So again, guys, thanks so much for coming around.